dyslexia. The random and unpredictable condition where speech and memory will not behave. The symptoms of dyslexia were first identified by Oswald Birkin in 1881 and named dyslexia in 1887 by Rudolf Berlin, an ophthalmologist, an ophthalm a doctor. So this is the guy we can blame for that title. A Greek-based word, dis, meaning bad, and lexia, meaning words. So it literally means bad words. One in five people have it, the difficulties ranging from mild to severe. I was struck by lightning. Many difficulties can be found in the bizarre mind of dyslexia. If we imagine the worst possible game of Wheel of Fortune, dyslexics may have just one or several of the following aspects, as difficulties vary greatly. Dyslexia. When most people hear this word, they tend to think of problems reading and spelling or getting letters and words mixed up. But it's more about making sense of what's being read. When sounding out syllables takes so much effort, the meaning can get lost as it affects the way information is processed, stored and retrieved. Dysgraphia. Difficulty writing letters and getting them the wrong, wrong, wrong way round. Difficulty writing letters and getting them the wrong way round. Such as those pesky B's and D's. <clears throat> Getting thoughts down on paper, remembering the word you want to use and recalling the way it's spelt. <laughs> Discalcula. Difficulty with numbers, maths, money, telling the time and timekeeping. Some dyslexics have more problems with numbers than words, as these two are symbols that may not mean anything to a dyslexic, but can affect their life by making them late for everything. Information processing. Difficulty with written and auditory information. To illustrate this, we need to imagine the dyslexic brain as an old computer when the memory gets overwhelmed by too much information and crashes. Dysmapia. Difficulty with directions, left and right as well as up and down. For many dyslexics, left and right can remain a mystery for their entire life, which may be shortened on learning to drive. Visual stress. Text can appear distorted, move or blur, and sometimes words may try to escape the page completely. Communication. Difficulty with speech, verbal fluency, mispronunciation, word finding or struggling to get words out at all. Finding the right word when you need it does not mean it will be the right word that comes out. Dyspraxia. Fine and gross motor movements and coordination. May affect writing, riding a bike, balance, coordination. Could this be why they don't get picked for games and are forever known as the droppers? Concentration. Difficulty with maintaining focus. Can be easily distracted. If we are to believe the storybooks, those were the good old days when men really were brave. Then the world was inhabited... Hey, you. You, come on, over here. Stress. One of the main problems for a dyslexic is handling the stress caused by day-to-day -day activities. Even so-called simple tasks such as remembering or prioritizing or prioritizing work can have the dyslexic pulling their hair out. Memory. Memory information not found. A dyslexic brain thinks differently. I'm dyslexic. Today's technology can make a huge difference to a dyslexic's life. But in the past, when it was not recognised by the education system, children were believed to be just lazy daydreamers. Being a daydreamer and seeing the world differently can have its advantages, as dyslexics learn best through creative processes. When they use learning methods that fit their thinking style, they can excel at many subjects. Storytelling. Acting. Photography. Art. Design. Architecture, engineering, customer service, support. Many dyslexics suffer with low self-esteem because of constantly being corrected, failing tests that depend on the ability to read and write, and self-doubt. There is nothing wrong with being dyslexic. We just have different software. We are Macs in a PC world. <laughs>